this video, we're going to go through the two primary ways of bringing survey data into a drawing. So typically exported from your field device is a text file or a CSV file, some form of delimited data that includes, at a minimum, the point number, the northing, the easting, the elevation, and some form of descriptor. And if you have that, you can bring it into Civil 3D. There are two main ways, like as I said. You can simply go to Insert, Points from File, <clears throat> navigate to your file location, and choose it. And then depending on which order of those fields um, you exported would be the one you chose. So I'm going to do the PNES so for point number, northern easing elevation description, and mine is common delimited and hit OK. And just that quickly, and easily it brings them in. And because I'm in this drawing that had those point styles and description keys built in, it automatically placed symbols at those locations. And as you can see, there are a lot of points. Let's come over here, go to all points, and um, go to properties. And you can see here all of the points in the drawing. And I was going to see if I could quickly tell you how many points there are, but it's not here that I go. So the other way to bring points in is the preferred way uh, for Civil 3D World for larger projects. And that is using survey databases. The survey databases are accessible through the survey tab in your tool space. If you don't have the survey tab, it is up here um, next to the tool space rip button looks like a total station and a GPS rod or total station and rod and I click it and you can see it comes on. Survey databases are containers that will hold your survey points. It allows you to have more abilities of controlling the points and their point edits. It protects them and even more exciting is that you can utilize survey databases to automatically draw your line work. So databases is how you get that field to finish automation versus the point files. Now, if you're using field finish in your controller and bringing line work in from that way, you can do that. The catch is that it needs to be 3D if you're wanting to use it for break lines for a topographic survey. And a lot of times it's difficult to get a 3D line work out of a controller. Um, and if you do it this way, it'll automatically draw it, and there's some tools in here to help you quickly add it to surfaces. <clears throat> to show you, uh, we'll get into the specifics of how to make that work here in a video. But survey database are just like data shortcuts in the, that it wants to know a working folder. So you choose a working folder. So I will go to location I'm storing these videos for this purpose. And you'll see that there are none. And I can right click and I can say new local survey database, give it a name, and hit OK. And now there's a video. In it are your import events, queries. You can build custom queries and have them stored. Networks, which are um, Total station and equipment loop networks. Figures. Figures are the line work that we can automatically create. Figure groups, the actual points of cells and point groups, all stored within the survey database. The survey database, as I mentioned earlier, is a secure and encrypted um, database type. The points can go in here, uh, but you wouldn't be able to edit the points like I can in properties dialog and I can just come down here and start manipulating these if I wanted. If it was a survey database, a user couldn't do that unless they had access to the database. So it gives you a little bit more control. I will show you how to import those into the survey database in future videos. But before we do that, there's some pieces and parts uh, of settings in survey and survey database go over before we do that. Now, I apologize now ahead of time. This may turn out to be a long video. I wanted to break this up into a couple, but 
there's no real good stopping place when it comes to the, to, uh, the survey databases. So before we start bringing points in, let's talk about these figure prefixes and line work code sets. Figure prefixes are the codes that you want to draw lines of. So objects in the field that the guys are collecting or your crews are collecting that are linear features. So edges of pavement, center lines, water lines, uh, sidewalks, anything that you want them to draw that they are collecting in the field that's a linear object that you want Civil 3D to draw for you, you should create a prefix database, a prefix of. And you can make a new database by right clicking on figure prefixes and saying new, give it a name, and store it in an appropriate location. In here, so I'll put new here so it'll pop down here at the bottom. And um, we'll just pretend that I'm making edge of pavement again. Whoops. So EP is the code that our field crew shoots for edges of pavement. And then I want to say whether it is a brake line. So edges of pavement is a brake line. <laughs> it won't let me have a duplicate, so we'll put EPP so that I can show you. I want the computer to know that it is a brake line, so I will change it to yes. It's not a light line. I can assign it a layer. This is the layer that the line work will draw on. So I could scroll down here to my existing road edge of pavement. This is the marker style. So in my case, it is 3D. So I'm going to change it to no markers, which is a, something we can get into in another video. So I'm going to leave it on standard and a site if you want to sign it. So it's just that easy. You create the prefixes of objects that the guy, that the crews shoot in the field that you want linear features of. Okay. Now, once you have that, you now need to come down to line code sets. And once again, you right click and new, give it a name and save and location. This is the commands in the, that they can put in the controllers to begin drawing line work. So not everything they shoot has to be field to finish, right? Not everything has lines. But if it is going to be a linear thing, they can start, end, close. You're able to modify this for your workflow or your organization. So in here, under the line work codes, are the commands that they need to include in their descriptions. Once you have both of those created, <clears throat> come up to the top of the survey tool space and click this icon here which is your user settings. And path, your default database, if you have one, and its settings, the line work processing defaults that we just created, and the figure defaults that we just created. With that set, and hit OK, that will remain set under the user that you are on on your computer. So that is set individually at each computer terminal and under each user. But it will remain so. So now that we've got that all set and made, I'm going to open a new drawing here that doesn't have those points in it. And notice that because it's Civil 3D, it kept this going. It's not tied to a drawing per se. It's built in. I'm going to go to import events and right click and import survey data. And then I'm going to step through, this should look familiar to the standard import. Bring in my points. And here it's gonna ask you again about the pre figure prefixes and line work codes. And we're going to insert survey points at the same time since this is the first time. And I'm going to hit finish.
and it brought in the points again. It looked almost exactly like the other one. Now, I think I might have used the wrong template when I brought these in. I don't see my uh, blocks. So watch this. We'll come over here. I'm going to say new from my survey template. And real quickly, since that was already stored in the import in the uh, events, I can just right click and say insert into drawing. And there they are. Up the scale up a little here. You can see it brought in my blocks, brought in my points. Now I can also right click and say process line work. Check these settings. And when I hit OK, you'll see that it automatically drew a lot of line work for me. It automatically drew all these water lines, um, gas line shots. Some invert shots. It drew all of this on the fly so that I don't have to. In future videos, we'll go through how to start editing and manipulating this information because um, almost never will the data come out of the field and be perfect. It will end up being they might have coded something wrong as the wrong side of the road. It should have been EP2 instead of EP1 or they've got a bad shot elevation wise you need to manipulate it stuff like that so we'll go through how to edit survey data that's in a survey database in a future video if you found this helpful please click the like button and subscribe for future content